what is the purpose of Apache Kafka? Question mark. All right. So there are multiple purposes because Kafka is basically what you say a message queue, a message broker. Let's start with a simple form, like simplest explanation. And then we go to one of the most common use cases. Yeah. So the first simple explanation is that, like I said, Kafka is basically is some kind of a message queue that has space for messages that you can send. They call that producing messages. So you can actually produce a message. For example, let's call it Fubar. It's going to basically put Fubar in the queue, in the beginning of the queue. Each time you're going to produce a message, it's going to put the message in the queue. And then you have the concept of a consumer, which can actually consume from the queue. And each consumer group has an offset and it's going to consume at its offset. Right? So if I already consumed Fubar and you're going to produce a new message, for example, you're going to produce Timmy. You consumed Fubar, the next thing you're going to consume is Timmy and so on. That's basically it. Very simple, right? This is, this is the most simple explanation. So why is it getting used, for example, in a system of services? Let's say this is service one and let's copy this a couple of times. And this is service two and you're going to have service three. What's going to happen is that, for example, so let's say that service one is sending data to service two. But service two is out. If service two is out, that basically means that service one cannot send data to service two. Hence, service two is not sending data to service three. It could also be that service two is also sending data to four or service two is doing whatever, but it's out. So one is producing messages that cannot be handled, cannot be processed. So that's a problem. So what people do is they actually use Kafka as some kind of a message queue where service one is going to produce to Kafka and service two is actually consuming from Kafka. Like I said, it's kind of a simple example, but that's actually the, a, a very common use case. There's another use case I'm going to explain. The two most important use cases, this is one of them. So basically what happened that if service two is out, let's go back to the previous without Kafka, right? Let's say this is going to be an exchange and this exchange is producing orders. This one is producing orders from clients that needs to be executed on the exchange. Very important, right? Orders, time sensitive. So the moment that service two basically borks, all these orders here, they are going to waste. Even though service two is out for three seconds, that's three seconds on orders lost. And we cannot recover that anymore. So what they do is they use Kafka and they are going to have the concept of the producer. So each order is getting produced on a queue and is getting consumed by service two. If service two works, these orders are getting produced, right? Remember, these orders keep being produced on its queue here. Order one, order two. So the moment, the moment that service two comes back online, it's going to keep consuming from the offset. It commits the last offset and if the last offset that was commit by service two, it basically going to pick up where it ended. Okay, there will be a bunch of orders in the queue, but it doesn't matter. They will be handled delayedly, but they will be handled and not being lost. That's basically Kafka. So very important is that let's say you have a, a full day of orders, but they are handled, right? So everything worked the whole day. Everything was fine. No outages, but... They are a full day of orders in the queue. We process them, but they are still saved in the queue. So what can happen is that there is a problem, not an outage, but a bug in the system. Something that we miscalculated something and the balances of this exchange, the balances, whatever the trades are off. So everybody's screwed in a banking system. That's not true because you have this full day of orders. So you can replay, you can basically let process two, and this is so keen and you need to understand that because that's what they're gonna ask you in an interview. If you wanna go for a Golang engineer, whatever, they're gonna ask you of Kafka, if you can can explain exactly what I told you, you're going to be hired instantly. So what they can do is they can replay the day, start from offset zero and basically let service two consume from the start of the day and process everything in the chain, right? So it's going to process every order and it's going to push it back to three and to four and to service five. And your system can basically reprocess, recalculate with the patched bug the whole day and have everything in the correct state again. Very important. 
So that's basically one, two, and the third use case is basically that let's say you have these orders, right? Producing to Kafka, consuming, it's fine. But let's say you have an analytics team, right? So the exchange is, is, is going, orders getting produced, orders getting consumed. But you have a new analytics team and they want to basically do some analysis on the orders, right? So instead of giving access to your database, to your analytics team or to your code, you could say, hey guys, listen, you can start consuming from this topic. So they can actually hook into the queue without interfering feeding the whole system they can just plug it in and they can also receive data and do something with it nobody cares and that can work for other teams right so you can have teams or other services can plug into the queue and i think this could be whatever team man this is like another team that's all the benefits of message queues it's important for systems that cannot afford to lose one piece of information that's basically why it's getting used for most of the time your project will never need that it's only for businesses that really really need that kafka also number one one in over-engineered services, right? Kafka is getting used for by a lot of people where it's not needed to be. If it doesn't consume, remove data from the message queue, no, no. Let me make this a consume. The only thing consuming does, you can choose that. There are a lot of options, but defaultly, A, B, C. Each time you're gonna consume what is called an offset. You're gonna have an offset per consumer group. So you can make a bunch of consumers because that, that's what I mean by that. This other team here is another consumer group. So they could be at offset zero, but the real service is already at offset 5,000. And another service is at offset 400. You know what I mean? So they can move independently from each other. And that's actually the cool stuff from that. So each time you're going to consume and commit, you're going to increase your offset. So the next time you're going to read, if you're Borg or not Borg, you can you start from the last committed offset. But it does not mean that if your offset is here. It could be that somebody else's offset is already here or here or here. And you can reset the offset and you can do whatever you want. Right? And that's basically it. So a very versatile system. Very nice. So it does not remove. But of course... At a certain point of time, you can choose to, there are a lot of options to delete, uh, to save it to disk. You can do a lot of stuff with that, right? You can have a lot of stuff. You can configure it. Like I'm not a Kafka specialist at all, especially not in configuration. I just know a little bit how it works because I used that back in the day when it was very important to have that. And what I remember the most is a replay of the day. I, I deleted it already, but that we could replay the day. So offset is basically an index. Yes, an offset is per consumer group, the index where you are in the queue. That's what it is. So there are majority of websites using it now. Websites don't really use that. Replay also allowed QA of new versions. Yeah, so that's true. You can also have a new version, replay it and test. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of stuff. Actually, Kafka is amazing, but it's only amazing if you work with these services, right? I see people using Kafka to store stuff and I mean, no, no. Basically, well, you do what you want, right? But in my opinion, if you not need to be high available and you can afford to basically, if a service goes down, yeah, whatever, then the, the user cannot do anything. But if you have multiple services, some services can operate, right? So they are producing data and then well, you need to do something, right, with the data. So you need to have this queue. But if you have a monolith, you don't need Kafka, right? Because if the monolith goes down, nobody can do anything, right? If you cannot produce orders, why would you put it into a queue? That's even better. So use the monolith. Save your time and a haddish.